It is November 1797. Britain is at war with France. Over 2,000 predominantly black and mixed race prisoners of war captured on St Lucia in the Caribbean whilst fighting for the French revolutionary cause arrive at Portchester Castle on the south coast of Hampshire. Fast forward 10 years, July 1807, and Britain is at war with France again, only this time because of Napoleon rather than because of differences of opinion about concepts of liberty, equality and fraternity. A new group of French prisoners of war from mainland France this time are being held on prison hulks in Portsmouth Harbour. They write and perform a four-act play about the revolution in Haiti for the British guests invited on board by the ship's captain. Four years later, in 1811, the playtext is copied, almost certainly for use by a third group of French prisoners of war, conscripts from Paris this time, who created a fully functioning theatre on the ground floor of the keep at Portchester. I'm going to spend the next few minutes explaining how my team's research has brought these three strands together to reveal some of the hidden stories of the revolution in the Caribbean and prisoner of war theatre in this Faculty of Arts at Home video, timed to coincide with the Resonate Festival, which has as its theme, freedom this month. My name is Kate Astbury, and I'm a professor of French studies in the School of Modern Languages and Cultures at the University of Warwick. Since 2013, I've been working with English Heritage at Portchester Castle to interpret the site and its history in new ways. The castle was one of a number of sites that housed prisoners of war. In total, there were tens of thousands of French prisoners of war in Britain during the French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars. And I think it's fair to say, wherever there are French prisoners of war during the Napoleonic Wars, there is theatre. We have evidence of significant numbers of them putting on theatre as a way of passing the time though few groups of prisoners reached the heights that the prisoners at Portchester did. In January 1811, the Hampshire Telegraph reported, The French prisoners at Portchester have fitted up a theatre in the castle, which they have decorated in a style far surpassing anything of the kind that could possibly be expected. The pantomimes which they have brought forward are not excelled by those performed in London. Thanks to Devon Cox, who did a PhD with me based on new archival material in the v and Theatre Collection, we know that the prisoners at Portchester wrote their own plays in a fully functioning theatre, including trapdoor, fly system for raising and lowering items on stage, and the means to send a cherub across to the boxes where the captain and his British guests sat. For the length of a performance, at least, the fact that they were ostensibly enemies on opposite sides of the conflict was put to one side. But the transport board in charge of prisoners of war put a stop to there being a public audience just months after the theatre opened. The Lieutenant General of Portsmouth was moved to write and ask that they might be allowed to continue to perform, if only amongst themselves. He wrote, Several pieces, all irreprehensible in a moral or political view, were well performed. The poor fellows were delighted with the encouragement they received. They thought of nothing else. And I do not hesitate to say that this little amusement, which made them all happy and led to the nous ne sommes pas si mal ici, went farther to take away the disposition to mischief than the view of the force placed to guard them. In performing theatre for their captors, the French prisoners were creating a powerful sense of solidarity, community and identity. They also seem to have taken advantage of the acoustics of the space to create a radio play, Avant la Lettre, so that those prisoners held on the floors above could hear the actors and orchestra when there wasn't room for everyone inside the ground floor theatre. The all-male cast was always on the lookout for new plays to perform. They had scripts sent all the way from Paris, for instance. And it seems as though they may have heard of a play written out on one of the prison hulks in Portsmouth Harbour, because a copy was made of this play in January 1811, when the Portchester Theatre was at its height. The French prisoners held on the hulk in the harbour used the power of theatre to explore what it means to be free and to sustain hope for an end to their captivity. They had been captured in the Caribbean after being sent there by Napoleon in 1802 to reclaim Haiti for France. A copy of a playtext and the original playbill have survived. We have a four-act historical drama called Le Philosophe Révolutionnaire, The Revolutionary Philanthropist, or Hecatomb on Haiti which premiered in July 1807. 
They put on stage fictional characters whose lives mirrored those of the real-life black revolutionaries from the Caribbean, held at Portchester a decade earlier. It might seem a curious choice of play for the ship's captain to approve, given that it was being performed by individuals who had lost their freedom. Their status as prisoners of war does result in a powerful exploration of what it means to be free, particularly in the lines spoken by Spartacus, the leader of the uprising, who speaks eloquently for emancipation. While the perspective is ultimately that of the white plantation owners, and the playwright is revealed to be equally critical of the concept of radical liberty enshrined in the Parisian Jacobinism and of the enslaved people's revolt, the debates around justifying violence to shake off the shackles of the enslaved are articulated and the moral complexity of the situation is apparent. It's very rare for playtext manuscripts to survive. This one has been copied and illustrated with stage sets. But if that weren't astonishing enough, the fictional black revolutionaries allowed to voice their desire to be free are very much like the real life black and mixed race revolutionaries held at Portchester a decade earlier in 1797. Although we have yet to find a direct connection between the actual revolutionaries and the sailors on board the Crown in 1807 who wrote and performed the revolutionary philanthropist, the stage action is echoing real life in dramatic ways. Though, as is often the case, the reality is in fact more remarkable than fiction. My current PhD student, Abigail Coppins, co-curated the permanent exhibition at Portchester Castle to bring attention to the 2,500 or more predominantly black and mixed race revolutionaries captured as prisoners of war in 1796. They had been fighting Britain on St Lucia in the Caribbean as part of a broader struggle for emancipation. There were women and children amongst those who arrived in Portchester in 1797. But you'll have to wait to find out more about their lives as this is the focus of Abigail's PhD. The British made considerable efforts to help the prisoners adapt to the British climate when they got here, providing them with extra clothing and food rations, and their officers in particular were treated with respect for having fought bravely and honourably in the war. In 2019, the internationally renowned sound artist Elaine Michener wove together extracts from the revolutionary philanthropist and letters from or about the prisoners of war from the Caribbean in a sound installation called Les Murs Sans Témoins, These Walls Bear Witness. The incredible lives and sacrifices of the revolutionaries captured on St Lucia were the source of inspiration for Elaine, who wanted to draw attention to the fact that their spirit can still be felt within the walls of the castle. Her sound installation allowed visitors to move beyond traditional narratives of the enslaved as victims to celebrating black agency. The installation touched on issues as much of relevance today as back then. And it led to a co-conceived project called Freedom and Revolution with the National Youth Theatre to explore further fundamental questions about human rights, discrimination and identity. The lives and plays of the prisoners of war also reveal the power of culture to overcome national differences. A brand new play by Lakeisha Ari Angelo called The Ancestors is currently in its rehearsal phase and will be screened in the autumn. Developed in the context of English Heritage's Shout Out Loud National Youth Engagement Programme, The Ancestors draws upon Abigail Coppin's research about the women and children who were brought to Britain, while also creatively reworking the revolutionary philanthropist. It will be a site-specific play exploring the legacy of slavery and of the prisoner of war experience from an international perspective exploring themes of captivity, freedom, place, struggle, authority and victory. The play is to be performed on site to allow the actors to take ownership of the castle space and reunite the prisoners and their erased histories in a powerful way. This exciting new project will harness the power of theatre to bring their stories to a new audience and tackle fundamental questions about identity and gender. I can't wait to see the performance. And we're uncovering more incredible stories about the Portchester prisoners of war in the archives all the time. So hopefully there will be more creative projects about them in the future. Thank you for listening.